And then third, he wrote that I fantasized about Martin Dunn raping his daughter. None of that ever happened. None of it. Now what did happen though was Martin Dunn, and I have this in the record, I have copies for all of you. <clears throat> what did happen was during Martin Dunn's deposition, he laughed at the prospect of me being gang raped in prison. And it's in the transcript. Justice Delanus and the several other justices on the high court allowed a white establishment lawyer by the name of Dan Mullen, a former AAG under Kelly Ayotte when they lost the Planned Parenthood case, and she lied about it. Anyway, they allowed him to make a number of materially false representations about me in open court without consequence. And I filed a motion to intervene, and they denied it summarily. These issues need to be brought to light, so I will do so at this time. First issue involves a gentleman by the name of Ralph Holder. Now, Justice Delanus and the entire court granted imprimatur to a violation of Brown versus Board of Education <coughs> and the related case of Palmore versus Sadati when a guardian ad litem and lower court used race as a criteria to keep Ralph Holder's black child out of a better New Hampshire school and to order that child into an inferior school in a less affluent, crime-ridden neighborhood in Massachusetts. Well, uh, I hope I'm fit to serve the state. And uh, if that's true, then perhaps the country won't be any worse off. Well, therein lies the rub, because as long as you continue to violate known established legal precepts like Brown versus Board of Education, when you did what you did to Ralph Holder, and as long as you allow bad cops like Martin Dunn and his lawyer, Dan Mullen, to lie about me and, and say that I was disbarred, that I had fantasies about Chief Dunn raping his daughter, and that I wrote a fraudulent letter when I was in a NAACP a legal chair, you know, all these things that were false, but, you know, Chief Dunn was busy laughing about the prospect of me being gang raped in prison and you ignored that. No, as long as you continue to do those kinds of things, you're not going to be good for New Hampshire or for the country, and that's just the way it is. I mean, look what she condoned in my case. I mean, are you kidding me? I mean, really? See, when you get up into New Hampshire, it doesn't matter how many trials you've won or what kind of public policy you've changed in Nashua, or who you've teamed with and, and done good things, or it doesn't matter if you have a mayoral commendation, you're still a... Is real. 
AJ would likely find it lonely being the only black child in a school in New Hampshire. He has a rich black heritage of which to be <laughs> proud. He can share with and learn from other children of his color, and it can enhance his growing up years in numerous ways. In Haverhill, he has that opportunity far more than it exists in New Hampshire. Now, that was by Patricia Frim, Esquire, <coughs> a court appointed guardian ad litem. Now, everybody on the face of the earth knows that that's unconstitutional. You can't use race as a criteria like that. And Brown versus the Board of Education had that established before I was even born, <coughs> 10 years before I was born. And Palmer versus Sadati said the same thing in a uh, child custody matter. Can't do it. Now, I don't know. I mean, I grew up in an all white environment, or my, one of my brother in law is white. I, I'm okay. Well, some might differ with that, but I think I'm all right. But the bottom line is, <coughs> it can't be used as a criteria. And, and I, can't, I can't believe that that could just happen like that in a civilized society, in, in a modern era. It's impermissible. Now, it got a little bit worse than that, too, because along the way, I have proof in my research that the uh, ethical board and everybody in the judiciary lied to Ralph Holder and told <clears> him <throat> that guardians ad litem were not subject to ethical uh, considerations at that time. But that's not true. Because the case in Ray Boyle's case, 136 New Hampshire 21, 1992 had come up, stating specifically where attorneys serve as guardian ad litems, even if the child is not a client, attorney's conduct is nonetheless governed by the rules of professional conduct. Yet when Mr. Holder tried to uh, address his concerns, he eventually was framed and made into be a fugitive from justice. That got cleared out. Bogus charges were brought against this man. By the, and the whole thing was just deplorable, but he got no relief from the New Hampshire Sup Supreme Court. Nothing. So it just sat there. And I mean, this is in the recent era, just a few years ago, this happened. So I think that's one issue to be aware of. And the second one, I think, is equally appalling. This involves a case in which I was involved. There was a Jaffrey police chief named uh, Martin Dunn. Martin Dunn was fired, and it was affirmed by former uh, AG John Arnold. And now, along the way, he got sick. Allegedly, he said that when I was in the ACP legal chair, he, he, he developed a number of illnesses. Rashes, diarrhea, vomiting, sleeplessness, all these things. So he was diagnosed with these things. But then he eventually brought a claim for disability before the high court. His lawyer, another white establishment lawyer named Dan Mullen, lied. And in the pleading said I was disbarred, which is a lie, never been true, never will be true. He said that I wrote a fraudulent letter when I was NAACP legal chair. That's not true. Never will be true. I was a duly elected NAACP legal chair. The letter was not fraudulent. And the only affidavit filed in the case in that regard stated from another NAACP chair, the veterans chair, Cleveland Ferguson, stated that I did nothing wrong. So he had no basis whatsoever to say that. But yet that document was filed in the high court. And then third, he wrote that I fantasized about Martin Dunn raping his daughter. None of that ever happened. None of it. Now what did happen though was Martin Dunn, and I have this in the record, I have copies for all of you. <clears throat> what did happen was during Martin Dunn's deposition, he laughed at the prospect of me being gang raped in prison. And it's in the transcript. Now what's really heinous about that is the hate mail that I got as a civil rights journalist said that I was a coconut head, head racist. And that uh, I better get ready, I'm gonna be Bubba's bitch. And Chief Dunn was laughing about that. And I have it right here in the file. He says, yes, heck yeah, that's a funny letter you're asking me to read. And so I motioned to intervene in the court. And I said, these are bad things that are being said about me. I didn't say those things. I didn't do those things. May I please have some relief to address the court about these heinous allegations against my character? And guess what I got? Nothing. Just go away. I think that's impermissible. You can't tell those kinds of lies about somebody. You get away with it. Clean. Can you speak to how Justice Delanus was involved? Because that's the nomination we have to consider <coughs> for the council if and when the governor puts it to a vote. Is the was, she ruled in both of these cases. All right. In the Holder case and in my case. Do you have copies of things you want to leave for the council for us? I absolutely do. As I said, I have the, the, the deposition transcript from Martin Dunn where he you know, laughed at the, the letter. I have it all. I have my commendation from the mayor. I have the part here that I want to read into the record that the chief thought was so funny. 
Here is something for you to think about, you coconut head racist. You better save your food stamps because you'll uh, need money where you're going to buy protection where you're going. You're about to be Bubba's bitch. Better get that Vaseline ready. Ha, ha, ha. So I have a problem with her ascension to the high point of the, of the bench right now when she seems to think that this kind of conduct, when she grants a perimeter that kind of conduct without giving me an avenue of relief when all these bad things were said about my character. And I think any of you would have the same problem with that. I think anybody out here would have a problem with that. That's why we're here to hear what the people have to say on these nominees. Thank you. Um, I appreciate that. The, inquiry from members of the council. If you have something, you want to leave. Yes, I have copies for everyone. With the concurrence of the council, that's where we'll go. Very well, sir. And this is the original. And I have uh, five or six <coughs> copies for the rest. There, I believe, and 